Well, I'm still stuck in hell. I know, sure looks like it. But we might as well turn demons into demon aid. Let's do the top ten worst satanic movies I haven't already talked about in some capacity. Be it a full review, a vlog, or my last bad satanic movies video. Or, uh, any ones I plan to cover in the future. Sorry, Evil Bong 666 This dumbing down of the devil's image has got to stop. Satan is to be feared and despised. Why would I fear a silly character like this? <laughs> Why would I praise a silly character like this? Ask yourself that, huh? Manos, the hands of fate. What can I say about this movie that hasn't already been said? There's some fun camp to it, but it's actually kind of a pain to sit through. Anyways, I thought I'd put it at the bottom of the list so anyone who cares wouldn't call me out on it. Easy pick, let's move on. Hail Satan! Hail Satan! Satan is his father! Demon Wind. A particular problem I run into is that, even if a film isn't great, I can sometimes get suckered into the camp of the whole thing. Demon Wind is an incredibly cheesy movie and one I actually kind of enjoyed. The only problem is, it makes no fucking sense. These kids go into a cursed house and inside they're sent back in time and are attacked by demons? It's sort of a dream-like quality to it. Like, nothing makes sense if you stop and think about it, but it seems to flow together. I don't know, it's the type of movie you can sit back and laugh at. If you're looking for a slightly gory zombie movie for your next bad movie night, I'd recommend this one, honestly. Oh, Bedazzled. Bedazzled is a brilliant and provocative comedy from famed British comedy duo Peter Cook and Dudley Moore about a man who sells his soul for seven wishes to impress a girl. And in 2000, they remade it with Brendan Fraser and Elizabeth Hurley. Clearly, this film lacks the edge or the wit the original had, but it also lacks a lot of logic. Like in the original, it always felt like the devil twisted the main character's words, and that's why every wish went wrong. In the new one, Satan will just include a wrench in the works he could easily just wish away. For example, one wish turns him into a rich, intelligent, world-renowned writer. But oops, Satan made him gay. That's not what it sounds like. Just wish for the exact same scenario, but this time you're not gay. It never feels like he learns anything. He's also a hopelessly pathetic loser at the beginning, but basically drops it as soon as Satan shows up so he can be a real character and not a cartoon. I don't hate it as much as I was maybe expecting to. There were a few laughs, even if the best joke is straight from the original. I think it shows Brendan Fraser's range as an actor, and goddamn Elizabeth Hurley as Satan. I want to be her. Why is this guy still bothering with his random crush? Hot Satan is where it's at. <laughs> Satan. Demon Witch Child. That title tells you everything you need to know, doesn't it? Try to guess what this movie from 1975 was ripping off. Go ahead, it's real subtle. Oh, it's the Wicker Man. This is a Spanish exorcist ripoff so hard, the director hired the actress responsible for dubbing Linda Blair in The Exorcist to play the lead. And it's pretty clear Blair didn't return the favor as the dubbing is awful, both in performance and in awkward English. He'll pay for this. I swear it! I'll put a curse on all of them! A curse on all of them! And they basically took that one scene where Reagan swears out the priest and turned it into the demon witch child's whole personality. The film was pretty goofy, I'm honestly still on the fence if I'm gonna review the whole thing or not. Let's just say, don't expect it soon. So hail Satan, and have a lovely afternoon, madam. Satanic. Another awkwardly blunt title with an awkwardly bad story. There's this trend in old slasher movies where all the kills seem to happen after the one hour mark. Satanic tops that by having basically nothing of consequence happen until the one hour mark. Even when things start happening, it makes no sense. The story follows four teens, including Eric from Twilight. Team Edward, Team Jacob, nah man, Team Eric. They go on a tour of a bunch of macabre destinations in LA, including the Sharon Tate house and a hotel where a satanic priestess committed suicide. Then they see what they think is an actual satanic sacrifice, but the girl getting sacrificed shows up and tells them she's okay. 
Then she puts a curse on them and kills herself for absolutely no reason. What's what's the curse for? They were helping her. Is she evoking a demon? What does the demon do? And then they all die in like 10 minutes of each other. Whoops, spoilers. Don't watch this movie. I love this song. I command you in the name of Lucifer to spread the blood of the innocent. Satanic Rites of Dracula. The Hammer Horror Dracula films were a lot more overt with their satanic imagery than most interpretations, and that's no more apparent than the final movie in the series, Satanic Rites of Dracula. I actually really like the Hammer Dracula movies, even the goofier ones like Dracula AD 1972, but this one was past the point of the series being fun. It was clear no one cared about making the movie, and Christopher Lee even admitted he hated being in it. He officially retired from being Dracula after this. In the film, Dr. Van Helsing is looking into some strange goings on and, surprise, it's Dracula. If only that weren't in the title. And if only you didn't show his fucking death on the poster. Spoilers! Draco barely does anything in this movie. He doesn't appear until nearly halfway into the film and doesn't get revealed as Dracula to the one hour mark. In conclusion, it's a bad movie. Hail Satan! Devil's Advocate. Ha ha, Satan is a lawyer. That's the joke, that's the whole movie. Jesus, this movie is boring. The only moderately interesting thing is Al Pacino chewing scenery, but that's hardly unique to this film. He does that all the time. What do I even say about this movie? It's bad, it's boring, it's Satan as a lawyer, which is just about the most obvious joke you could make. I'ma say it, lawyers have a hard job and we need to stop dissing them all the time. For every lawyer doing something bad, there's one doing something good. Like, that's just statistically the case. This movie, however, is statistically bad. Hail Science! Touch of Satan, another MST3K classic that barely has anything to do with Satan. A boy meets a girl by the pond and she invites him home for dinner, but it turns out she and her family are witches. It's lame and boring. In fact, a lot of the movies on MST3K were lame and boring. The funny ones were kind of the exceptions. It did make for a funny episode, but it sure doesn't make for a good movie. Because Satan's not in a guitar pick. He's inside all of us. He's in here. In your hearts. End of days. Arnold Schwarzenegger versus Satan. This should be the most hilariously on-brand film I've ever seen. How did you make it so boring? Probably because it came out in 2000, about a decade after Schwarzenegger stopped being in anything good. But even then, no Schwarzenegger movie should be this depressing or confusing or wholly uninteresting. The story goes that Schwarzenegger, a suicidal detective and former cop, discovers that Satan himself has manifested in New York City in the year 1999, and plans to destroy Earth at midnight on New Year's Eve. This should have been a hilarious cheeseball movie, why is it just sad? There's a scene where Satan jumps through the air, Schwarzenegger hits him with a grenade launcher, and he flies into a train and explodes, and I still don't care about this movie. What a disappointment. But if you want to talk disappointment, let's talk about my number one pick. The number one worst satanic movie I haven't already talked about in some capacity. You know what's worse than an exorcist ripoff? The Exorcist 2, The Heretic. A movie that's somehow less accurate to The Exorcist than Demon Windchild. And only slightly more accurate than Dawn Exorcist. I almost forgot to put this on the list because there are so few horror elements I forgot it was satanic. Let that sink in, I forgot an Exorcist sequel had anything to do with Satan. And it doesn't, it mostly revolves around a demon named Pazuzu, who's apparently an African demon? What? This is hitting Indiana Jones levels of conflicting religions. It's also not scary, and not even in the way that like other films on this list aren't scary, like it doesn't even attempt to be scary. It's just weird and surreal. It doesn't help that the performances suck. 
Linda Blair worked as a horrifying demon girl, but she hasn't pulled off a single good performance since. Max von Sydow is reduced to a bit part, and Richard Burton takes the lead in a thoroughly underwhelming performance. Even James Earl Jones sucks. Dude, I'm right here. No, Darth. I forgot you were here. Anyways, this was hardly an exhaustive list. I didn't even get to any of the Omen sequels or that Jonah Hex movie. And man, I feel like there was a big one I'm missing out on. That'll come to me. I could easily come back and do another one of these lists, but don't expect it anytime soon, because I have got to get out of hell. Darth, anyone ever escaped from here? Uh, one person? Really? Who? Nicholas Cage.